Hi, I will proceed to write an application from scratch. Let me explain the use case. Let's say we had an Excel uh, or information that uh, shows many different servers that are located in different uh, locations here. And we also have uh, software or products that um, live in different servers that are installed in different servers and you, we want to be able to uh, we have these two Excel spreadsheets we want to uh, connect them and integrate them into a web application uh, so that uh, folks can edit both of them and make relationships between them so I'm here using my personal space in the uh, out systems platform with uh, different applications and I'm gonna write a new application and I'm going to call it uh, YouTube uh, Demo. And I'm going to say Save. And I'm going to write a new eSpace module. So here we have the IDE with four different tabs. Uh, data for all our uh, tables or tables that we can connect to through the OutSystems platform. Logic, all the code, all the uh, business logic. Interface which has the flow of screens and the screens so everything it has to do with the ui and processes for business process management workflows and so on and so forth so i'm going to go into data and the first thing i have to do is uh, create entities create tables uh, that uh, contain that data from those different excel spreadsheets so first i'm going to grab uh, the product spreadsheet and and I see the columns that I have in this table. And I'll do another one for the servers or the locations. So let's grab this guy here. I say open. And it brings that in. And these are the columns. Let's say, for example, the server, we wanted to um, add more columns. I can say add entity. And I can say one, let's say we wanted the address. So we have an address column. And let's say we also want to add an email. And I say email. And notice that down here it shows me the attributes for this column. And in this case, the data type is not character or numeric or date. It's specific email. It figures out, the platform figures out from the name that I use that that's, uh, that's the logic or the, the type of entity that it will be. And it will, it will help us adding the correct logic for example when we enter an email it will check that it's syntactic syntactically correct and let's say in our uh the, in, for the product we wanted to have a picture of the product uh, just to make it interesting i can right click and add, and go into advance and create um, import image for for a product of images for images for the product i mean and let's say uh, I don't know. Let's let's go with this guy um, as the as the default picture. All right. So we have those two things. The interesting thing we can do here in the data is we can draw um, diagrams. So I'm going to add an entity diagram, entity diagram. Give it a name. And what happens is we can pick, uh, with images we can see pictorially what uh, relationships between. Uh, tables and and in this case a server may have different products and product could exist or be installed in different servers so we have a many-to-many -many relationship how do we do this well let's create um, an entity that will represent those relationships so I'm gonna call it relationship and um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it in here and right now there's no way there's no connection between these tables what happens if I grab the product and I uh, drop it into relationship and then I do the same thing for the server I drop it to the relationship now I have a many to many and this table will represent all those combinations all the different combinations so let's go uh, let's look at the screens now if I go to the main flow, this shows me that when a URL is given and entered, they'll come in here. 
what I can do with the platform, with the OutSystems platform, is I can create uh, screens very, very easily. So let's say I have, um, I want to show the servers. I'm going to drag and drop the servers and put it right on top of that home page. And now this is going to give me a list of all the servers. I'm going to do it again and it's going to allow me to see a specific one, read only, and then I'll do it again and now it's going to allow me to edit one of those servers, server locations. That's great. Now let's do it again for the um, for the products. So I will have a product list and I will have a product show just to look at one specific and finally a product edit. So this acceleration or scaffolding that they call it, what it's doing, it's creating all this all these different pages and not only the pages are created but there's logic that gets created that is um, happens before the the page is rendered and and it it sets up uh, different parameters that, that you may need and then you can change them uh, later some of the preparation of that one it uh, it reads the products and um, and it uh, dresses up the, the the screen that we that is uh, this screen here um, so let's see, we have all that. Um, notice, by the way, that all along we've had this, this green button. This green button symbolizes true change. True change is the technology that is constantly checking that the relationship between all the variables and data is correct, that, that what we have is a coherent application, and whenever, uh, and it keeps us honest, it makes sure that, that it's a clean application. Um, in this case, everything is, is going okay. But say, for example, that um, I wanted to skip this page. I want to go from the product list right to the product edit. So I want to bypass this, and I delete that screen. All of a sudden, this turned red. There's an error. Why is the problem? Because the product list used to point to the product, um, uh, the, this product show, and that and we we've taken that out and I can see that from this message that when I double click it it tells me exactly what the issue is that when when in the product list someone was going to uh, hit a product enter a uh, click on the product it was going to the product browse or the product show no longer to the uh, now we need it we need to change that to the product edit so I go here and I select product edit and now everything is normal again so we have uh, Let's go back to the pro. We have an application, um, and um, I'm ready to show it to you all. So I'm going to click on the green button, the one click uh, publishing bot uh, button. And what happens is that it saves the, data, the, the code, it, um, it creates, it, it compiles it. It can compile to either .NET or to Java. And it's publishing that code in the server, in a runtime server, and deploying it. But also, it makes whatever changes or alterations or DDL that is required in the database that is in the platform or the, the, the runtime server. So now it's been uh, done. And that could be SQL Server or, or Oracle. So I come here. Let me close some of these uh, other tabs that we don't need. And it's loading the page. And here we see all the servers that we have. And if I go to the products, we see all the products with the uh, default uh, picture. Let's say that I wanted to edit one of these products. Uh, so I click there, I go right to the edit. I may want to change the picture here. I'm going to choose another uh, picture to, to, um, to show instead. And say upload. And um, so now I have a, a picture, and let's go back to, actually, let's go back to the product. So I see my little icon representing the, the image. Um, and in the, in the servers, let's say I wanted to, um, I wanted to put a, uh, an address. So here, this is a show, so it's browse only. If I um, edit this, this server, I come here in the Massachusetts server, and I want to put an email, uh, an address. Let's put my address in uh, comma um, ma, and let's say I put a, an email, and I say save. Here I'm giving, I'm getting a, a validation 
uh, because it's not a true, syntactically it's not a true um, email, but when I do it this way, it can, but all that is code that the platform did for me. I, I didn't have to write all that code, so that's, that's really awesome. Let's make it more interesting. Now, let's say, how do we create a relationship between these two uh, sets of data? We have the, uh, we, we've created the, the, uh, the, the relationship in this table here. Now, let's uh, put it to use. So I'm going to go to interface, and let's say when I'm, um, when I'm, when I'm um, editing the products, I want to be able to see all the servers that have it. So what I all I have to do is uh, grab that relationship. Let me move the screen here. Grab the relationship table and enter it here. And and I'm going to do the same thing to the um, to the server show. And I grab that relationship and I put it here. So this is going to show us. It's going to allow us to. Uh, see all the software that is installed in the server in California. And this is just a placeholder, but it shows you how it's going to look. And um, by the way, um, everything we do is using responsive design, which means that the screen it, it, uh, it will fit in any device that you may have. If it's an iPad, it will have all the, all the ways of moving around the application that you need. If it's a, an iPhone, and this is how it's going to show. So let's go back to big screen here. Um, another thing that might be interesting might be to have a map here. Um, we have an address. Uh, how do we know where this address is? You may take advantage of, of something like Google Maps, so which gives you an opportunity to talk about how with the platform, you can extend the platform with uh, web services, SOAP and REST, but also there's a whole community of out systems uh, developers that f that feed different applications to the out systems forge and i can take advantage of all that intelligence to add logic i'm going to re add references that may be in my environment that i've already downloaded before uh, from applications that were already written i'm going to look at show all and I see that um, I may want to take advantage of this Google Maps. So I'm going to um, grab that guy and um, grab that API that someone wrote using the OutSystems platform. And now that I have that, when I go to interface, I see that I have this Google Maps. And I am going to um, drag and drop this here. And I notice that this one read again and it's telling me I need an address, so I double click on the address and I see what data my application has access to, such as for example the address, so I select it and now it went back to green saying that everything is okay. And here, just to make it nicer, I'm going to close it in the container, this is the kind of stuff that you can do so that when it displays in a, in a mobile device, uh, this will line up correctly. So we're ready to try again, and I'm going to publish. So he, here I have all my servers. So for example, if I go into Massachusetts, um, it integrates with with uh, the Google Maps. If this was a different device, like an iPhone, it will just know where to place it, and I have all this different logic built uh, by the platform so that I can uh, be responsive and no matter what the device is, the application will look great. Uh, so here we have an address. Let's go back to those servers and let's say I wanted to edit um, here California. I'm going to edit this server and I'm going to add um, Los Angeles. Let's say that's the address and I'll say save. And if I go to California, it has the map. Now let's build some relationships. If I go to products, let's say that uh, this billings application, I can um, I can create a new relationship and say, well, let me show all the California has this application. Um, 
let's say Massachusetts has this application and, uh, and uh, New York has this application and you can see that the logic to be able to delete something is all built built in so I didn't have to write all that code the acceleration the scaffold it provided me with all that uh, functionality so if I went back to one of those servers for example New York uh, we see that the product billing uh, appears there because we we built that um, that relationship. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Thank you for watching.